Mr. President, I join my colleagues on the floor today to speak in opposition to the pending legislation to outlaw abortion procedures after 20 weeks. This is yet another extreme effort to allow the government to interfere in the health care decisions that should be strictly between a woman and her family and her physician. This latest attempt is particularly dangerous. It would impose prison sentences of up to five years on physicians who don't fulfill the law's deliberately burdensome requirements for documentation and reporting. And it would even impose a prison sentence of up to five years on doctors who fail to inform a law enforcement agency about another doctor who failed to meet the law's requirements. Viewed more broadly, this bill is part of a continuing campaign to take away women's constitutional right to privacy, a right that protects profoundly personal decisions concerning our bodies and our families. I remember very well the days prior to 1973 when abortion was outlawed in most states. An estimated 1.2 million women each year resorted to illegal abortions typically performed in unsanitary conditions by unlicensed practitioners and often resulting in infection, hemorrhage, and even death. Well, I think women remember those days and we are not going back. As governor of New Hampshire in 1997, I signed into law a bill that repealed our state's archaic laws that dated back to 1848 that made abortion a felony. Like that 1848 law, the legislation now before the Senate would also threaten physicians with criminal charges and imprisonment. Abortion later in pregnancy is extremely rare. Indeed, almost 99% of abortions occur before 21 weeks. And when an abortion is needed later in pregnancy, it typically involves very complex, life-threatening and heartbreaking circumstances. For example, the discovery of a severe and likely fatal abnormality, as described by Senator Hirono. In these difficult circumstances, a woman consults with her doctor and with other people she trusts. A woman needs the freedom to consider every medical option, including serious risks to her own life. The extremely narrow exceptions in the bill before us, exceptions if the pregnancy results from rape or incest, are deliberately designed to impose burdens, complications, and shame on women who have chosen to terminate a pregnancy. The victim must provide written verification that she's obtained counseling or medical treatment from a very specific list of, quote, medical providers who do not provide abortions and who are often strongly anti-abortion. This requirement is a completely unnecessary burden on a woman who is already dealing with a crisis. It's also insulting and condescending to all women. We're not children who need guidance from an adult. We can consult those we choose to consult, and we can make our own decisions. To impose this requirement in this crude manner is something right out of A Handmaid's Tale. And then if the rape victim is a minor, she's allowed access to an abortion only if she can provide proof that she reported the crime to law enforcement. Again, this is completely out of touch with the real world. Only a small percentage of sexual assaults and rapes are reported to police. Nearly 80% of rape and sexual assault victims know their offender. So let's say this plainly. The reporting requirements in this bill are an outrageous attempt to judge and shame women and girls who have been victims of a violent crime. I heard from Rachel, who is a registered board-certified nurse in New Hampshire. She told me that bills to impose blanket rules and arbitrary limitations, bills like the one before the Senate today, are out of touch with the reality she sees in her practice every day. Rachel said, and I quote, while procedures at 20 weeks and beyond certainly comprised a small portion of the care we provided, it was absolutely critical for those that needed it. 
Many pregnancies are not surveyed with ultrasound until 19 to 20 weeks, at which time previously unforeseen complications can be detected. Then there are often further procedures needed to finalize a diagnosis and a prognosis. For people who receive devastating news about a pregnancy after 20 weeks, abortion may be the best option, and they deserve access to that care." End quote. The American Medical Association opposes this bill. The AMA says, and I quote, we strongly condemn any interference by the government or other third parties that causes a physician to compromise his or her medical judgment as to what information or treatment is in the best interest of the patient. I urge my colleagues to respect the women of this country and their right to make their own health care decisions without the unwelcome involvement of politicians and law enforcement agencies. Let's reject this partisan, extreme, and frankly unnecessary legislation today. And then let's focus our bipartisan intention on the urgent business of passing a budget, funding our military, combating the opioid crisis, and the other needs that this country faces. Thank you very much, Madam President. I yield the floor.